Hello. I didn't see that. I guess you're. Uh oh. What'd you do? I only hit the wrong button. Hey guys. Sorry. Sorry. I'm trying to get it on my phone so I can make sure that we have the comments together. I'll have to click my link. Hold on just a second. Yeah. I'm glad you guys can join us where we have one person on so far. <laughs> Sorry for being late too. We were trying to get stuff set up. I didn't know we were late. At the... Whoops. It, it happens. Yeah. Let me see. Okay. Ow, see, it's like not showing me the live. That's because you're in the app, babe. You have to go into the actual thing. Well, I just clicked it. I'm trying to get this on my phone. So we can keep up with the comments. But it's just not loving me right now. Anyway, so how is y'all's... Well, I mean, when someone gets on, how is y'all Sunday going, you know? Doing Open pretty good. Browser. Yeah, our Sunday's doing pretty good. God is good. Amen. I just can't do it. You're just going to have to figure it out. I don't know. Let her... So today I wanted to talk a little bit about um, natives and pollinators, um, wildflowers, why they're important in our garden and why we should have at least one spot available in our yard for these specific plants. So before I get into that, <clears throat> if you, my biggest advice is to look up online where you live and what your most common wildflowers native plants are like what grows native in your area and um go from there um you can go to your local nurseries and after you find those plants that work in your area the native the natives and the wildflowers you can ask them for some of these plants or you can ask them for seeds most wildflowers are really easy to grow um, it's a matter of just throwing the seeds out in your designated area I know you, a lot of you have you seen our plants. he's on my thing <laughs> um, once you get the seeds um, I've kind of just scattered them in a designated area where I wanted them um, if you have a smaller yard you could always plant some seeds in some pots. Um, you can do what works for you. Um, like I said, wildflowers are really easy to germinate. Some of them may need some um, cooler weather first, so you would be planting them in the fall. So I have my handy dandy binder, and I have a binder because I like to know things. I like to know things. <laughs> I like to do things right, and he's kind of the same way. Um, yep. I wanted to show you guys some plants, especially that are good, that, that most places have native. Um, I was looking at Texas wildflowers and Texas natives, and a lot of other states have these same native plants. But like I said, go into it, look at what is native in your area. So first of all, the importance of natives and wildflowers. Why are we even talking about this? One of, I think our first year gardening we had made the landscape, our garden, veggies. That was it. We just used veggies. We planted veggies, which was great, right? We all want to eat vegetables. We all want to eat fruit. Hey, Growing with Hudson. So the problem with only planting veggies is um, you need pollinators to pollinate most vegetables. Um, some are self-pollinating, but most vegetables need pollination. And how you get that is, hello, Michael's Adventures. Okay, he's got it on his phone, finally. Yeah. <laughs> he was trying to find a way to get the comments. So, when we first um, had the garden, I noticed we didn't get a lot of bees. We weren't getting a lot of butterflies. I mean, that was one of the things that I looked forward to. I really wanted butterflies in the garden and I was so upset when I didn't see them. I was like, what are we doing wrong? Well, there's two big ones, using pesticides, insecticides, and not having enough flowers. And even some of the flowers that you buy from big box stores, a lot of them have been treated 
and they're not good for your pollinators and native pollinators, bees, butterflies. Um, and you'd be surprised how many insects actually pollinate. Um, and not just insects. So I wanna go over this real quick with you guys. Like I said, I have my handy dandy binder. I also teach forest school. So I have a lot of information about a lot of different things. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome though, because uh, I lean on her all, on a lot of this stuff. She has like all the knowledge either here or in the binder. Yes. So with things like this, <laughs> I kind of let her just take it and go. And then I do input where I can, because at the end of the day, we're a team. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about it. Zinnias and sunflowers sure bring in the bees. You got that right. Yes. Hummingbird. Oh. Our zinnias brought in so many pollinators i was amazed and they grow so easily yeah her she loves sunflowers like that's one of the things that she well, really started planting they bring in the bumblebees yes. and i love <laughs> bumblebees no, you're no it's okay it's okay i love <laughs> bumblebees i just think they're so cute and they sleep in the flowers sometimes so most plants that bring bumblebees i try to grow just because they are so cute yep. so that's just a little thing for me just I, they're just so cute yeah Okay, so in Texan in Texas, <laughs> Texas. Texanus. Texanus. <laughs> that's a speech, by the way. Texanus. No, that's how I speak. It <laughs> Pollinators are bats, bees, hummingbirds, butterflies, moths, wasps, yep. fl uh, flies, and beetles. So wasps is so funny to me because I remember when we first started gardening, I was like, Ooh, how do we get rid of the wasps? Like, they're so useless, no point. I'm in an apartment, the pollinators seem to love the flowers from the plants I grew. Oh yeah, like, especially in an area where you are, like in an apartment. Yep. Um, they don't get much. They probably get the plants that the landscapers do around your apartment, but when they see goodies on like people's balconies and stuff, I mean, it's like a huge treasure for them. I love South. Can you put that yeah. back? Yeah. Um, it was just saying that it reminded her daughter that passed away. Aww. Um, yeah. Our wife, like I said, she plants, <laughs> our, my wife, she plants a mammoth sunflower in almost every single raised bed that we have uh, do to need? do that specific thing, drawing those pollinators. He'll be okay. He'll be fine. No lay in the bay. Yes, it's fine. That's um, so, yeah, man, flower, sunflowers are beautiful. I, I always didn't like them, mm -hmm. but once we figured out the right variety to grow, mm -hmm. that was the thing. Well, um, the first time we grew sunflowers, there's a native sunflower, right? I'm talking about natives. Woohoo! Yeah. Woo! <laughs> it's called a common sunflower. Those things, oh my word, they drop seeds and it's a wrap. Like, and these, yep. the common sunflower is very, it's a situation. So we stopped growing those because <laughs> it was taking up our whole garden. And I started growing the mammoth sunflowers because not only will, can they act as something for pollinators, but they acted as a trellis as well. I had um, climbed some of my tomatoes on their stems and that's awesome. Like just use what you have and what you can. Also the mammoth sunflowers, they, use, they were used as shade. Yep. So they were for the pollinators, they were used as a trellis and they were, their leaves created shade for my plants in the raised beds. So that was awesome and I now I don't stop. It's like one mammoth in every bed. Yep. Um, your pollinator friendly plants should receive full sun throughout most of the day. Butterfly adults generally feed only in the sun. I didn't know that. So, um, which our garden is, a lot of it is full sun. Yeah. A lot of it, and you'll start to see um, which plants go well for you and which don't. It's a hit or miss. I mean, you you start rotating as the season goes on. You start to see, hey, well, zinnias are supposed to do good. Why aren't they doing good here? It might just be a matter of moving them. Yeah. Um, so just don't be afraid to play around with the landscape and seeing what goes well. It may not go be work there, but that doesn't mean it won't work it may will work somewhere else yeah so usually the south side of the garden is usually the sunny spot um northern northern is a little shadier usually if you have a ton of trees obviously you're not going to want to plant a bunch of 
sun loving plants underneath trees correct you know you might need to save that for hostas hostas are beautiful and they um nice and green foliage and they're actually edible um so just play around with it um clumps of flowering plants will attract more pollinators than single plants scattered um so when i first started planting natives um, and wildflowers um, I was like, okay, well, I can put um, the cone flower there. I can put one over there, and I can put one over there. So I was just trying. I was like, maybe I'm doing a good thing by doing that. It's fine. But a better way is to clump them in one. So if you have three, I'm trying to remember the name of this plant, Echinacea, Echinacea. <laughs> it's also a medicinal plant. It's really awesome. I have it on my list here. It is a, I'm just gonna show you a picture. So the pink flower with the orange top, the echinacea, they are better clumped together. Uh, most natives, most wildflowers are because they see, the pollinators see a big burst of color. They want to see that. Yep. Um, and that'll attract a bunch rather than, hey, one over there, one over there, one over there, unless you have bigger clumps. But if you have one plant, you're, you're not gonna wanna make it lonely. And actually, I've noticed that they grow better in groups. So grouping your plants is a good thing. Find a designated area. Um, we have a big, well, the south side of our garden is mostly natives. Yep. Um, it's either perennials like oregano, sage, I'm trying to look, <laughs> lavender. Yeah. I mean, there's our strawberries are over there and most of our wildflowers and native yep. plants, sage, oh my goodness. In Texas, sage grows amazing. And there are so many different varieties and they attract so many pollinators. You need pollinators in your garden. Yep. You stop using chemicals <laughs> you don't want to kill off your pollinators either yeah so make that's very very important because like like we say i mean more pollinators just means more fruit yes because they're going to pollinate your flowers they're going to help the fruit to grow so i mean these are things that you want to attract so that's why it's so important to plant flowers as long as mm -hmm. with your vegetables and things like that to attract those things and I mean, when you companion plant, it's a beautiful thing because it actually benefits what you're trying to grow. And they're beautiful. They are. It's amazing. And when let's okay, let's say it's off the season, you know, the season just ended. You have all these dead plants, right? You have all these like our sage right now looks terrible. It's like this huge bush of dead plant. <laughs> That is actually helping the pollinators and insects that overwinter, like yep. that make their little nests and hide until they come out in the springtime. So don't cut those back yet. Give it some time. Yep. Let them, let the the insects kind of stay in there. And once it starts getting consistently, like the ground and whatnot is consistently like 60 or 70, high degrees, then you can cut back your, um, perennials, your natives, etc. cetera. Um, I know a beautiful, clean garden in the wintertime is so tempting, but it is better for the your little garden ecosystem if you keep things kind of ugly for a little bit longer. Um, we ha I have a list of some pollinators that I really, I mean, some um, pollinating plants, some wildflowers, natives that I really do like. So Angel Silva, that's my dad. So shout out to my dad. <laughs> He's faithful to our channel. <laughs> so um the indian blanket which is i'm gonna try to do these names but i don't want to butcher them the galliarda pulkella uh maximilian sunflower is a good variety Hold on. last year a few people i know had a horrible problem with horn hornworms on tomatoes i planted marigolds with around my tomatoes i like to think they warded yes that's another thing so i myself the more perennials, natives, wildflowers that you have in your garden, the less pests you will have on your actual vegetable plants. Yep. I have seen this two years in a row. I have seen this. Um, the maybe the first two years, our plants were just taken over by like aphids, um, hornworms, um, the, just so many different insects 
Yeah. But the more natives, as we started growing all this stuff, um, the less they went onto the plants. Pet stores buy them? That's interesting. That's really interesting. I don't know. I feed them. I just throw them out to the chickens. Um, yeah. Or some of them, like, depending on the, like I said, I, we haven't had a huge problem with them. Wasps also eat them. They do. I know this because I've seen it happen. Yep. I was looking for hornworms one day on my tomato plants and a wasp came out of absolutely nowhere, went, shot down, grabbed a hornworm, threw it on the floor and was eating it. Yep. So another great reason to have pollinators because a lot of these insects, they eat the bad guys, the pests. Yep. They keep the pests down. If you start looking more into permaculture, you're gonna start to learn that it just works when you do it more like an actual, like mimicking the actual system that's actually happening. Yep. You know, the, the less you have to work. Correct. And I don't want to be in here working all season, like worrying about this and that and having to go buy BT all the time and having to go get neem oil and having to, you know, stress about the majority of my vegetable plants. When in reality, if we kind of mimic the system that God has already given us, it starts to work out way better. I just wonder how much they pay for the hornworms because that might be worth it. I don't even know where there's a pet store. What are you talking about? There's Petco, like two well, minutes pet from here. I don't know if Petco would buy our worms, but I guess we can look into it. I don't know. Um, another great pollinator or um, wallflower is pink evening primrose. Those things grow like crazy. They're a pink flower. They look kind of, I think some people called them like buttercups or something. They, um, they're like a pink flower. They're like, their heads are like this big. They have a lot of green foliage. Um, they grow native here. Like, I mean, in ditches, everywhere. Yeah. They're everywhere. I ended up putting some in my wildflower garden and they grew like this. I mean, a lot of the garden is, they're the first things that pop up too. So they're one of the first flowers that the bees get to see. So it's kind of like a sneak peek preview. Um, the earlier things start blooming in the garden, the better. Because yeah. you're already showing the insects around your area that, hey, this garden has the good stuff. And that's what you want. You want to show the insects, hey, the good stuff is over here. So that when you start planting your plants, the ones that you want to eat, um, they can be pollinated. Yeah. Um, you can hand pollinate plants, which certain plants I do hand pollinate, uh, like squash, but that's because I really want it to get done. I want to know for sure that I'm getting every single squash off that plant, but, um, do I have to? I probably don't. It's probably gotten to the point where we have so many pollinators that they're probably already pollinated. But me, I'm just being a little controlling and trying to make sure that I do get my squash. Is there anything in there? No. Okay, I'm um, gonna, okay, and go like ahead. she was saying, another thing about the whole, you want to try to do that. Like if you can find flowers that bloom early and then find some natives that bloom late in the season, then you can extend that. Um, so you can create it to where the pollinators actually stay around longer right. uh, because you have those flowers that's always drawing them closer in and, and around. Mm -hmm. So it's important to look at that also. Right. Um, and of course, a lot of the things that she's saying is native to us here in, in right. Texas, North Texas. So make sure you look for the natives that are local to you in your area that's gonna grow well, do well, uh, and be able to really uh, help your garden. So some of the things that she's saying is just native to us. So it may not, I won't say apply to you. So mm -hmm. look for your natives, what right. you know grows well in your area and be <laughs> able to implement that into your garden because it's a, it, you'll be surprised the yield that you get from just having some natives around. Are you, if you are by a state, com, not community center, visiting center, visitor center, yeah. um, a lot of visitor center, like in your states, will give away wildflower seeds or native seeds for free. And they do that because they want these natives coming back. Yep. They want these wildflowers being grown because they see what an issue it's become for um, native insects. You know, they need native plants to continue on. So they're working really hard to get the system back to where it is. And it's really difficult when a lot of people are using so many chemicals and they're buying a lot of plants that they haven't researched from big box stores. And if you look on the labels, a lot of them will tell you if they've been 
uh, sprayed with any chemicals that are harmful and a lot of them will like take pride in the fact that they haven't so make sure you're reading those labels and if your parents or your family members are like I knew you love plants so I bought you these plants make sure they know what not to uh, what to look for in those labels if anyone wants to like be kind and you know buy you anything like post it on Facebook one before the season starts. We're like, hey guys, check those labels just in case. You know, not trying, just maybe they'll see that and kind of it, that'll encourage people to check those labels. Yep. Um, we have, I, there are some plants right now that we should be starting here indoors um, if you wanted to grow some flowers. Um, in January, we should have been starting pansies, um, dianthus. Dianthus is an awesome flower like we have them in our perennial bed they are beautiful and they also bloom pretty early um some other plants that bloom pretty early for us i'm trying to think because i had it in my mind but it's not there anymore um i'm pretty sure like snapdragons i overwintered snapdragons i should be getting blooms very earlier because i overwintered them in our little greenhouse over there i mean they're actually behind us, <laughs> but it's a clay pot. I don't know if you want to grab. No, no, no. It's the big. Oh, no, that one's not the clay pot. Okay, so these are overwintered snapdragons. But um, if you wanted to grow snapdragons, you can grow them now. Uh, sweet uh, alyssum, um, foxglove, poppies, uh, roses. Roses uh, bring in a lot of pollinators. Yep. Uh, petunias. Petunias are huge here. Um, they are, they get huge and they're beautiful and bright. You, the, like I said, the, the brighter, the bigger, the, the happier the pollinators are. And go for those early blooms. Early blooms are key because like they want to see, they want the, they want to see that this is the garden worth coming to. Um, I already have bulbs popping up from um, the, wow, what are they called? The bulbs? Wow, my mind is going. I don't know. <sighs> I'll get back to you on that. But some of my bulbs are already coming through and they were doing that before the freeze. So it's, I'm kind of hopeful this spring that we're gonna get a lot of beautiful flowers. Um, elderberry, if you are in a climate where you can take on- Daffodils, lilies. Daffodils, yes, daffodils. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, I was like, what in the world? I know this flower like really, really well. <laughs> I don't know why I can't think right now. <laughs> It's just a lot of information and it's excited. It's exciting to talk about because it is. it's something so simple that we all can incorporate. But I think a lot of people don't think about it. Um, they don't think, I just don't want you guys to have to work harder than what you're already doing. Like don't work so hard. Let your garden work for you. Let your soil build itself. Let the organisms, the fungi, let the, the pollinators, let them all work together for you and your family. It's going to be better for you. Yep. Um, herbs, we love herbs. Pollinators love herbs. Lemon thyme, oh, the little flowers oh, yeah. are so pretty. Yep. And lemon thyme scatters so big if you let it. If it has, if it's happy, it will grow huge. Lavender, the bees love lavender. If you are able to grow lavender, research how it grows in your area, what variety. There's English lavender, there's Spanish lavender, there's a bunch of different varieties. So research which one grows best in your area. Yeah, and a lot of people, they focus on the bees, which are very important. Um, and one thing I found out with doing a lot of research on honeybees and stuff is that they actually forage, I guess you would say. They pollinate, whatever. They go out, and I think their range is three miles from their hive. So, I mean, you may think you don't have bees around because you live in, um, like you said, in the apartment. Uh, but you'd be surprised. Like bees, they go around three miles outside of their hive to get the pollen and the things that they need. So, you know, don't ever be like, oh, well, I'm in the middle of a city. I mean, bees live everywhere. Um, and like she said, flies. Uh, everyone hates flies, but flies Pollinate. are a pollinator. Mm -hmm. So they, they do that. Same with hornets. Like I used to always say, well, hornets have no purpose. There's no reason to have hornets. They are literally just there to steal the honeybees' honey. Uh, but come to find out, they pollinate and they kill hornworms. 
So, um, you know, you'd be surprised with the things that actually benefit your garden and really play a good role into it when you never realized it or thought about it before. So it's right. amazing the things that we found out doing this and, and working in this and going down this road that we've gone down. And it's amazing how God knew everything that he needed and how he produced everything for us to be able to do that. <laughs> Inside, they hop on the yellow strip road to nowhere. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Ew, those are so gross. I'm not going to lie. I mean, we don't like flies indoors nope. at all. Like, I mean, ugh, they're terrible. But they are pollinators, and they're good in your garden. <laughs> yeah. So another good one is Coreopsis. It's a yellow flower, and it has like a... Um, a burgundy inside. Coreopsis is beautiful in the garden. I love it and I look forward to it every single year. And once the cool thing about wildflowers, as long as your dirt is solid, once the wildflowers begin to grow, they will drop seeds. A lot of them will drop seeds by themselves and they will just grow the next year. You don't have to do much. Yep. That's so exciting to me about wildflowers. You get beauty every year. And one year I bought a pack. The, the one year that I started the wildflowers, I bought a big pack, had a bunch of them in there. It's a troll in here. Where is there a troll in there? Yeah, I, I already got them and reported them. Thank you though, okay. I appreciate it. So we sprin I sprinkled the seeds in the fall and it was kind of like, no, actually I did it in the spring and you're supposed to do it in the fall, but it still worked out. Um, I sprinkled them and it's like every year I get like new surprise flowers coming out of the wildflower garden and that's so exciting to me. Flies are nasty. Did you know if you get fly poop to use in the garden, it helps keep many insects away. That's interesting. How do you get fly poop though? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I just wonder that because- Hi, mean, Mama Kitchens. Uh, we, um, I mean, we get worm castings, but how in the world do you get Fly I don't know. castings, I guess, or fly poop. That's an interesting thing to look at harvesting, I guess. I think, I, so I wanted to talk about elderberry a little bit, but I didn't get to finish because I, I talk all over the place. I'm very sporadic when I speak. I'm sorry about that. Now, elderberry, super easy to grow, but you have to keep it watered. It, like, we're in a hotter climate. And I, people were like, I don't know if you can grow elderberry. You have full sun, it's hot. You know, you can, you can. Um, you can create an area where the water will flow down to the elderberry plants, or you could just keep up with watering. We use rainwater to uh, <laughs> water most of the time. So I was able to, last year I did better with the elderberry. The bigger the plants, the easier, because the they have also have a tap root, I believe, that goes down or something like that. I don't Which know. One? The elderberry. Oh. They've been doing really good. Their flowers are huge. I mean, like little, but like they're, what is it called? <laughs> their branch of flowers, just a bunch of little, flowers oh, but yeah, it's they huge have, yeah correct it's like the size of my head you get lots of white flowers from elderberry um happiness and all you do do what you're talking about so you can buy it you can buy it from, from boogie, boogie forgot, forgot the rest of the name let me look yes look let us know so elderberry is a great one to incorporate in your garden it comes back every year you yep. can propagate that plant like nobody's business oh yeah like she uh, think, i could uh, probably cut it down to the ground yeah. right now and have a hundred plants of yeah. elderberry Do, yeah. i just have to root because all you got if you have a stick like this long three foot four foot you just cut it in nodules mm -hmm. and then just stick it in the ground and let it right. grow and then it pops up and does a really good job so that's another thing we learned propagating is super easy like mm -hmm. once you buy plants that are easy propagatable like you don't have to worry about buying plants anymore you, you just don't. propagate you really don't you just or if you have the it. right area to overwinter some of the yep. plants that are able to be overwintered it's awesome and if, if you learn how to collect your seeds so many plants have easy seeds to collect that you could collect now back to herbs fennel is an amazing plant dill is an amazing plant for butterflies milkweed that's a native um, we have some behind our fence, thankfully, yep. that's growing, that uh, that was already here. Amazing for monarch butterflies, yes. which there, there's a huge thing right now, save the monarch butterflies. So you could get seeds for native plants online if you dig, and free seeds, close to, or you may have to pay shipping, but for the plants for monarch butterflies. 
you can have your garden registered as a monarch butterfly stop um, as long as you have and meet the criteria for how many perennials, natives, etc., which varieties for the monarch butterfly. And it's, there's just so much you can do. I, it's so exciting. I want to, that's a goal for me one day for our garden, probably in the front yard, front which yard. is nothing right now. We have nothing going on in our front yard to become a monarch stop station. Yeah. Um, there's just, it's so exciting. Rosemary, Rosemary's little flowers attract so many pollinators. Um, we don't really think about the herbs, but herbs put off so many beautiful flowers, but guess what? plant more herbs so you can designate half of them for yep. the pollinators and half of them to collect for your family for your foods yep. um what kind of po what kind of perennials do you guys grow put them in the comments so we can all do some research on some of those perennials yep. and most perennials and even wildflowers are medicinal you would need some plants you wouldn't even think you could use for your medicine cabinet it's pretty crazy all the benefits to so many herbs and i wanted to read some of the benefits um on here i do have some so let me just get there right now and like she said like designating things are important like um mm -hmm. i forget who i think it was uh growing with hudson i think may i may be wrong but i think you were talking about um how you use flowers for cuttings um and, and that's the same thing like designate certain flowers that you want to use for cuttings and, and that you want to create with bouquets and mm -hmm. and things of that nature and then have another one that you just allow to grow to seed so that way your flowers can continue and that way your pollinators can continuously have that to come back to i mean it's so important like um like i said it was something that we didn't really think about too much mm -hmm. when we first started gardening was right. pollinators we were like oh vegetables 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 this <laughs> that and the other we were growing all this and i was stuff. hand pollinating i'm like where are the bees and you see it on the gardening pages all the time yep. people are like have you guys had trouble getting bees in your garden and you're like no we've been good but it's because it makes a huge difference when you grow natives i try to yep. share herbs and natives all the time like every season i try to share some with friends and propagate and give plants because i want them to have the success that we've been having once our eyes were opened yep. what did they say i started an herb basket with chamomile cinnamon and regular basil cal calendula that is an amazing herb amazing that's actually the first flower i have ever grown in gardening actually the first anything i've ever grown in gardening my friend angel she lives in washington state when i used to live there she gave me seeds for calendula they are beautiful and they're amazing for your skin i actually take all the petals off i dry them out i put them in avocado oil and i let them sit for five weeks in a jar in like a dark place and that oil is gold. That oil is amazing for skin care and inflammation. Um, it's just so good. Most herbs you can dry out, put in avocado oil, let them sit, and you have a beautiful oil, or you can put it in vinegar, a beautiful vinegar for when you need it medicinally. Yep. Um, so time, remember I was talking about time. It's awesome for pollinators. Okay, glad you upgraded to Texas from Washington. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love Me too. Texas. I love Texas. I met my husband here. <laughs> she okay. never would have moved. We wouldn't have met. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so, thyme is anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, antioxidant, antiparasitic, um, and astringent. And uh, I'm only going to say that because I don't know what the other words mean. <laughs> <laughs> Time is great um, and it's good on steak and meats. So <laughs> it's an awesome one. Um, thyme has a lot of uh, benefits and you can literally cut a piece of thyme, put it in the dirt and it will just grow there. Like I've done it all over the yard. I have a yard full of native and adaptive perennials, blackfoot, daisy. Oh yeah. I remember you telling me, so she bought a house and it was already packed, jacked, packed full of like a cottage garden style. Wow. That's cool. You That's... need to make a video. If you make one video, it has to be that <laughs> video because I want to see this cottage garden. I want to see it this spring. Well, you have to. You have to. Where is she from? 
She's here in Texas. You should just let us know. We'll come over and do a video of yours. We have a lot of children. But <laughs> <laughs> maybe, I don't know. But yeah, we w <laughs> that would be nice if we could come over and you do know, a video of your cottage we could, garden. We could do a live of your cottage garden right That's there. That's a like, great idea. On site live. <laughs> That's so totally funny. up to you though you know i don't mean to just invite ourselves over there okay so echinacea which i still feel like i'm saying it wrong antimicrobial alternative immune stimulant like this is what i usually um that tea is really good how uh, many kids how many children okay so we have four and then we help raise three so seven right four yeah well in the summer seven because two of our children live with their mother in north carolina yeah in the summertime yeah and, and then two live with us so we get them in the summer and we get them on holidays etc and spring break etc yeah um so right now currently we have five correct and but yeah they're all very hyper beautiful children <laughs> between fort worth and dallas fort worth and dallas yes that's, not, that's like I a know. 45 minute drive from us yeah i want to see it i do yeah because we're on the east side of dallas so we're like 30 minutes outside of Dallas to the east. So. so another great herb, peppermint. Don't grow peppermint on the ground. Grow it in a pot or a big bed. We don't even grow peppermint anymore. Peppermint. Because I haven't gotten peppermint. I haven't bought plants since before the the wovid. I didn't want <laughs> the wovid. <laughs> the wovid. <laughs> I haven't gotten plants since then because of everything and our nurseries were like didn't have anything. So I tried to I've been trying to plant from seed, which is kind of encouraged that. I was it's exciting that it encouraged that. So uh but I do want to grow some peppermint in the future. It's just in a closed area because that stuff will spread. But it's also a great medicinal benefit plant. Uh, spearmint in pots. Yes, that that's gonna be us too. I did do it one year and I don't know what happened. I think it got overrun. The pot was just overrun. Um, that's an anti-congestant, which most of you know, I'm sure. Anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, antioxidant. Peppermint overall is really good and it smells so good. Um, there's a lot of different <laughs> herbs that are so good for you most herbs are um and you get like dill dill our dill this year well last year got like four foot tall almost five oh, foot yeah tall. the thing was massive probably more like five feet yeah um it was huge and it brought all the pollinators to the yard like it was amazing and i mean you're able to pickle with dill you're able to do a lot you have to cut them back a lot <laughs> Yeah, the peppermint, I learned the hard way. Um, I jam-packed spearmint and peppermint in the pot. Yeah. Itself has an amazing hiking trails for sites to see, but the further south, the longer. The yeah, um, actually, Washington State was the easiest gardening that I've ever had to do. Like, I literally threw seeds down, and those things were flourishing. I guess because of all the... Because even where I lived, I lived on an island called Whidbey Island. And it had some, there, it wasn't hard rain. It was very misty rain most of the time when it did. So I, it, my garden just did so good. Um, I, it's when I got to Texas that I had to work a little bit harder. But now that we have the soil in order pretty much, yeah. and we kind of have a way with our soil of the, using the mulch and stuff, um, it's gotten a lot easier. So that's that's exciting for us. Um, but yeah, I did enjoy Washington. It was beautiful. Like, but all the laws and even homeschooling um, had a lot of laws that I, I'm thankful that I'm not there anymore. I'm thankful that I'm in Texas because homeschooling is much easier here. Um, a lot more laid back and not many people down on your throat about certain things. So Thankfully. I'm I'm thankful for that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I can choose the curriculum that we do. I don't have to have my children do the standard test or anything. Um, also, make your garden your style. Like, you, it doesn't yeah. have to be a cookie cutter garden. It doesn't have to look like Better Homes and Gardens magazine. We kind of recycle. We're big on recycling and reusing. Uh, when we when we got flagstone, we made little paths. Um, I mulch with like four different mulches. Like right now, I'm seeing like all sorts of different mulches all over the ground. It's all about the covering for us. Yep. So I have rotted hay over here. I have arborist mulch over there. Um, I have dead plants in the, over there. <laughs> you know, it's 
It's ex can you close that little thing so they don't get so cold? Yeah, no, I gotta fix that one. It broke. Oh no. Okay, sorry. I blew Whoop, squirrel. Okay, so um, make it your style. My uh, we made a tiny little water source. Oh, that's another thing. Have some type of water source in your garden, like a tiny, like even a bucket of water. I'm just gonna show y'all real quick. Yeah. Look. That's, that's a, our our little pond area. It's tiny, but it works until we. I want to. We both want a bigger pond. Obviously, that's like a little thing. It's actually a rabbit feeding bowl, <laughs> and we created around it like um, flagstone and uh, birdhouse gourd, so insects can go inside. Um, it works. Uh, we just have to fill it up manually um, every now and again. But have a water source because just like you, your insects, your pollinators are going to want to drink, especially bees. So the thing with bees, yes, we want a koi pond. It's okay. It's okay, Bubby. Go back inside, okay? It gets better, buddy. Go. It's, it's a good movie, Bubby. Go watch. Thank you. I love you. I love you. You need to go inside and be obedient, like we said. You can go in your room. And That's play our it son, Hollis. He's so sweet. Okay. You don't have to watch it. You can go in your room and play or something, okay? You want to go take him real quick? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. He's sad. Um, he is not a fan. We don't normally watch anything. But while we're doing this, we put on a little movie for them. It's not a, it's nothing bad. It's nothing crazy. But like one of the person is being mean to the other person. And my son, oh my gosh, my son does not play that. He don't like when he, when people are being mean to each other. So they, <laughs> somebody said something mean to someone else and he's sad and he doesn't want to watch that movie, which I don't blame him. So he's watching something. He's, he's going to go play blocks or something. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Ah, water source. Yes. You need a water source, the bees want to drink. And if you create something, make sure you have something to where they sit on. So like, I know people who filled up a kind of like a, I don't know, like a pot like this and they put marbles in it or they put like rocks in it and then only filled up the water just enough to where the bees can sit on the rocks and drink when they can. Cause you also don't want to kill the bees. Okay, let me see. Okay, I gave info above. Let me know if you see it. Do I see it? Let me see. Gave you info. I'm looking for the info you gave. Finding happiness. Yeah, I couldn't find it. I looked through there. I, I yeah, I don't see, see it. it either. I couldn't see it. So I'm sorry if we missed it or something. I didn't mean to. I try my best to keep up with comments. Um, we but. have an email on our uh, description and our link for our YouTube. If you wanted to email the info, that'd probably be easier. I don't know if Facebook's just not showing it. Uh, Hollis or YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hollis, cool name. One of my favorite gardeners on YouTube's name is Hollis. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, it, that's actually his father's name, who is deceased now. So we named our son after him. Oh, need a koi pond. I agree. I'm, I'm he wants for a, a koi, koi pond, pond a lot. I do. I've talked about it for probably about two years now. Mm -hmm. I even I had, keyword had, I think we, we used it for a garden bed now, <laughs> but I had this really big barrel that was like a, a pretty much like a plumbing drainage pipe. It was huge. Um, and I was going to bury it in the ground because I know the deeper the koi fish pond, the bigger the fish get. Mm -hmm. I was going to bury that thing deep, cause a nice pond to be in there so they can get out from the birds and all that. But it never happened. So yeah. I'm waiting one day. We can still use it. There's one it that's empty happen. there. Yeah. It'll be fine. Like I said, it'll happen. I'm not worried about it. We have the rest of our life to live in this house. So, um... There's one plant I'm super excited. No, there's two plants that I'm super excited to grow this year that I am Black hoping brings a bunch of pollinators is Borage, B-O-R-A-G-E. Um, I'm super excited. They have give off really pretty little flowers. I think they're purple or blue. Um, and they're also super medicinal. So I'm so excited to grow that. Um, okay, it is Boogie Brew. Google and look on YouTube. Okay, cool. We'll look into that. We'll look oh, okay. at it. We're going to probably subscribe to them because I'm really curious. And the other plant is um, comfrey. So excited. So comfrey is also an amazing plant to create your own fertilizer. Um, you can either cut the leaves, throw them down, or you can cut the leaves, let them sit in water, 
and they will uh, do their thing. So you can have a liquid fertilizer and just all you have to do is dilute it in your watering can or whatever system you have and that will be the fertilizer. Um, comfrey is also a medicinal plant and that's something we will be using to feed our rabbits. And that's something I wanted to discuss as well. So this book, if you don't already have this book, it's called Beyond the Pellet. Um, if you raise rabbits, this book is awesome okay yep. this is a way of cutting the feed bill um pro in half or more um this is pretty much being able to feed your rabbits with forage but with high vitamins better than the what the pellets provide um i do plan on giving pellets still not nearly as much though but they have a list of plants here that um you can grow for your rabbits. So beyond the pellet, I may have a video on that soon. Comfrey also makes a body pain relief. Yeah, huh. I'm going to probably be including that in some skin balms that I make. Um, I'll probably make a video on that too. Um, we can, well, not completely, but the majority of our skincare is made by me, um, especially for our daughter because she has dry skin and so I need to make her special stuff. Like calendula is a huge one that we use. Um, and the comfrey is going to be incorporated in that mix as well. Yep. So I'm excited for the comfrey. I'm really, really, really excited. But if you do buy comfrey roots, you need to get the Bach 14. Or I think it's the Bach 4 as well. They are varieties that won't uh, be invasive. They won't take over. Comfrey can be, uh, like with most plants, the seeds, and then they can be blown, and then you'll have comfrey all over the place, and it's really hard to get rid of. So make sure you get a Bocking 14, a Bocking 4 variety of comfrey. Every garden needs comfrey. Fruit, and yes, I make own body butter laundry soap. Awesome. I have not gotten into laundry soap. That would be cool. But that would be amazing. I just haven't gotten into that that far you yet. Definitely save a lot of money with that. Mm -hmm. Laundry detergent is no joke. It's yeah. expensive. We currently, we try to use a um, company called Puracy, P-U-R-A-C-Y. Yeah. We really like their laundry detergent. It's just a matter of their shipping. Their shipping is not the best. It's been horrible lately. Yeah, <laughs> it's not the best. It's unfortunate. Um, so you pay like, $30 for this laundry detergent and it takes forever to get to you. Um, but yeah, making our own laundry detergent would be an awesome thing. We try to be as natural as we can. Yeah. And we want to encourage you guys to start, even if you can't just cold turkey cut everything chemicals out of your life, um, just slowly do it one by one, little by little, yeah. what you can do. Um, like I said, something as simple as vinegar. Buy vinegar, incorporate herbs. Um, get avocado oil, incorporate your herbs, um, make some body oil or hair oil. I also use um, the avocado oil and certain herbs to make hair oil. Um, just little things like that make a huge difference in your health and overall look, you know. Yeah, because like she said, piece by piece, because in order for you to get rid of everything that you have that's chemicals and then completely convert over right away, that's a lot, like a lot of work and a lot of time, and it would be a lot. I spend so 10 to five gallons. Here. I have been video making it. It's amazing, and five gallons last a long time. I'm gonna have to go look at that video. That's exciting. I can't yeah. wait to do it. I really cannot yeah. wait to do it. Because like she said, we've we've slowly transitioned into that. She does the bee balm now, or not bee balm. <laughs> she does like the-, the Bee balm is also an awesome <laughs> native. <laughs> she does the balms and stuff for her hands, for her hair. Uh, so we're trying to get more into that. Um, she's looked into making her own soap and teas things and teas. teas. Yeah, she she does a lot of that. We love tea. Bee balm is a beautiful tea to make. Um, we grow stevia as well, but I don't like the taste of stevia. But they put off beautiful flowers, and I do know people who like the taste of stevia. So. If you grow an abundance of stevia, you can dry the leaves and you can pulverize them and you can make stevia. 
Um, there's little things too that you can, just by growing natives, medicinals in your garden, you can sell these things to make a little bit more money on your homestead. Um, like we've grown loofah, we've grown things to make skincare and I've sold some um, and it helped with feed and different things. Um, I'm just so excited that something we love and we take very seriously for self-reliance, etc., self-sufficiency, that also can help us in um, monetary value, that can help us to put more into this. Like something we love is benefiting us in many, many, many ways, not just our health, but just overall finances that's yeah. exciting to do you know of course occasionally we give like i always give extra plants out to friends um but you know in the long run you know it's that's what it's all about right you you give you um you sell when you need to to make money you, you help your family you can you fill your storage <laughs> you know there's just so many benefits to gardening and just doing it the right way, doing it the way that I, I'm really serious about doing it the natural way. Um, it's exciting. Have you tried sugar cane? I haven't, but I've seen so many videos on sugar cane. <laughs> <laughs> but, so maybe one day. Yeah, like, I mean, for her, well, me, I drink coffee. Um, we both drink coffee now. I kind of introduced her to the coffee world. Uh, she's more of tea, but for me, I don't really use that much sugar um, in my drinks. I use honey. Um, so, I mean, I know she uses sugar for a lot of her baking goods and things that she does, but for me, I've never liked sugar in my coffee mm -hmm. or in drinks. I do always, I've always tried to use like honey, um, and other natural sweeteners. And even honey there. lately, um, make sure you are finding beekeepers in yes. the area and you spend your money on small businesses. Yep. Spend... Unfiltered raw honey is yeah. what you're looking for. It is the best. And not only like, because people are like why do you want raw honey why do you want local honey well the importance of local honey is these bees are getting the pollen from native plants yep. and so a lot of people have allergies and sometimes the honey that is local can help with your allergies um they can help soothe you because yep. it's you're, coming you're, from local plants yep. you're eating the pollen from the plant so mm -hmm. it's it's your own um anti well um allergy medicine you could say you just take a teaspoon of honey a day they say and it, and it really helps i've known people that's been very beneficial for that we're um, um we just got in contact with a beekeeper or we got the information for a beekeeper local do you remember the name of the beekeeper like uh b and b honey or something like that i use date sugar it's awesome we love dates i like Shwaganda dates they're good yeah, I've also oh, yeah. heard of ash ash ashwagandha. Alternative I've heard coffee. of the supplement. Yeah, I use a so dandelion um, supplement of coffee uh, most mornings, but when I'm with my husband, we drink coffee together. But in the morning, I try to use this dandelion root coffee supplement. It doesn't really taste like coffee, but just the fact that I know it's better for me, yeah. I, I enjoy it. I mean, I'll just, but I'm also a person who has to have milk in oh, my yeah. coffee i have to yeah i'm just i it, have to <laughs> i can drink it i can drink it straight black i'm fine but mm -hmm. if i do put sweetener in it it's honey um but i know coffee is a horrible yeah. thing it has a lot of chemicals i'll use I honey think it's the too but thing. until we can buy it in bulk like we now that we have that beekeeper yeah um i don't plan on using much do you hear all the birds Yeah, I love hearing the birds. That's the most, that's exciting. I know. Okay, I'm trying everything in my apartment. I've made a lot of stuff because it's more important than ever before to know what, what's in whatever I use internally and externally. When you start to learn the products that you use on a daily basis and what yep. is what it's made of, you start, your eyes open like never before. Like yep. I was a child that struggled with um, eczema. I had severely bad skin. I ha I would even get it on my eyelids. Um, I struggled with a bunch of stuff. And then you look back and you're like, hello, all the stuff we used in our house, it was terrible. Yeah, horrible. A lot of the children that struggle with breathing, I mean, with different like respiratory things. I mean, I know people who had that aha moment. They're like, I clean the house with very harsh chemicals 
every day. Yeah. Every day. And then I wonder why we struggle so badly with respiratory issues. I mean, your mind gets blown by just all of the things that you're like, huh, it was this. Let me replace this and try to do better. We've been doing amazing, I think, for the past three years of just health in general. We have not had any health issues at all, even the WOVID. Praise God, we have not yeah. gotten it. Yeah. You know, we're just trying to do better. And I'm not saying we didn't get it because we're so awesome or whatever because of that, but I'm just saying, like, things make a difference. The way you live makes a difference. The way you eat makes a difference. Just yeah. try little by little. But I'm also not a fan of throwing things away. So if your cabinet is full of some foods that you're not, you're kind of like, oh no, I need to start over. Don't throw that food away. You know, work your way to yep. what you want to be. Don't waste money. Um, pray over your food, eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, you can start stocking little by little on good food that you enjoy, good food that you feel proud to eat um, yep. that is better for you. But don't throw away this food. Yeah, and don't move. And yes, uh, she, <laughs> hey Sue said that she got in trouble growing loofah at an apartment. Yes, that's because loofah will take over you everything. You grew it at an apartment. That, that's, that's, that's awesome. Your whole balcony was probably covered in loofah if you were in that, like... I bet you um, had all sorts. My husband who gets nervous. Loofah's nuts, man. Like, the first year we grew it, it took over well, two trees. Well, those flowers in general, I bet you had massive. bees all over that apartment. They loved the loofah flowers. Yeah. Loved them. Yeah. I was like in shock. That's well, That was part of the reason why we didn't chop the vines down. Yeah. Because there were so many bees. They were yeah. loving it. Absolutely loving yeah, it. Yeah. So that's pretty. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> I bet they didn't know what to tell you either. They're like, what in the world is this plant? <laughs> why <laughs> Why is it doing? so big? I know. That's Stuff so cool. Stuff grows like crazy. Yeah, I tell my wife every year I don't want to grow more loofah, but she keeps planting it, which I'm okay no. with. As long as we, as long as we contain it, I'm okay Not with it. Not true. I planted it one time, and then the next year, it they came back. all started popping up everywhere because I was trying to get the seeds out of. I remember exactly what happened. I was trying to get the seeds out of one of the sponges, and I couldn't. So I was hitting the oak tree, and when I was doing that, the seeds were just like but I didn't know that those seeds were going to germinate and I was gonna have a hundred loofah plants. That was an accident. So if you wanna see some of what we're talking about, we have a reel, I think, about the loofah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so there's, there's those plants everywhere. She said it grew up to the second floor <laughs> and almost up to the roof. Oh, what? That's so cool. I that's love that. Hilarious. I think that's awesome. Either your neighbors truly <laughs> loved it and thought it was cool or they thought it was an annoyance. So. I know. Like, how did that work? You had to tell your neighbor, be like, I'm sorry. Don't touch my loofah. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to grow food. Well, not you could eat it too, but I'm trying to grow sponges. Right. You know, that's so cool. Exfoliation is important. Yeah. Whatever's on your second floor, go ahead. Feel free to pick it. Oh, hey, the light turned on behind us. Yeah. It's getting kind of dark, that's why. A little bit. Yeah. But. That's uh, exciting. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get ready to end this video now yeah. that it's getting kind of dark outside. But I wanted to discuss a little bit about the pollinators, about how the importance of natives. And um, make sure to go online, check your area, check what natives are good in your area, and look for free wildflower seeds. I'm telling you, there are websites that give them away because they want you to do better. They yep. want us to do better about and joining together in unity to take care of the plants that the Lord, that the Lord has given and the pollinators that the Lord has given. And yep. they're better for your garden. Yes. The more plants you have, the more natives that you have, the better your plants will do. Yeah. Don't, don't give up. Don't quit. You know, just start this year. If you didn't plant any last year, do it this year. Uh, Y'all are scaring me. I'm going to grow loofah. <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody has to experience Just loofah do it. at least one time. Yeah, grow it. I'm telling one you. One time. It's, <laughs> you, your mind will be blown and you by know what? how it grows. The sad part is I do know people who failed at loofah and they're like, well, I didn't get anything. I don't know what happened. I don't know how they bombed it. But for us, it's grown like crazy. So if you want seeds, I got seeds. 
Yeah. I got seeds. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Email me, Leah, and um, we can set something up. Give me your number so we can set something up so we can come see your garden and maybe we can record a video. <laughs> so um, have a great night, guys. We love you. Thank you for the support. Y'all are awesome. Hey, Amen. Thank y'all so much. And God is good. we are thankful. So thankful for all of the love that you guys show to our videos. Um, make sure you continue to watch and I'm going to try to go through and watch y'all's videos as well. If you want seeds, email me. Email me. Our email is in my info and I can probably just send you seeds. I have loofah seeds for days. Yes. I give them away. Like, I'm just yeah. like, take them, take them. Yeah, because one loofah creates like a thousand seeds. I, I feel still like. got sponges <laughs> in the house with seeds in them that yeah. I need to shake off. <laughs> yeah. So yes, email me if you want seeds and I got you. Yep. God bless y'all, have a good night. Thank y'all. Okay. The email, um, it's on my info on my YouTube page. You click YouTube, YouTube my YouTube page, and then it'll be in the info. Um, yes. Okay. So have a great night.